Welcome to this week's episode of Talk of the Town. My name is Philip Swiskett and I am back with my good friend, Dr. Harper from Vein Specialists of the South. Now, if you have any concerns about your veins, give my friends at Vein Specialists of the South a call and they will get you the answers that you need. This week, we're talking to Miriam Ponton Lewis from Visit Dublin. Miriam, thanks so much for joining us. Certainly, thank you for having me. Now, you are from Visit Dublin, and so a lot of our audience is more in the Macon Bibb area, but you know, I know a lot of people end up going to Savannah and other places, and there's probably a lot of people that drive down I-16 and they pass Dublin going somewhere else, and they don't know a lot about Dublin. Can you tell us what are some of the things to actually do in Dublin? Sure. Uh, Dublin, yes, is amazing because we are right off the interstate. So we do get that back and forth traffic between Macon and Savannah. Um, but definitely pull off the exit. Our visitor center is right off of exit 51. So you can stop in and we'll chat with you about what you should go do and see. Um, but we have some amazing uh, dining just miles from um, the exit in our downtown area. It's been completely revitalized in the last several years. And um, we have a lot of history and a lot of uh, amazing architecture. Um, so it's definitely worth it to take the little trip off the interstate and go stretch your legs in our downtown area. That's fantastic. I personally have a lot of fond memories growing up doing a lot of deer hunting and, and quail and dove hunting around Dublin there. And one of the one of the just great things about Dublin is that it's so close to all of this quality wildlife experience, but then you have the city that's right there. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's fascinating that it's that proximity is just so close. Tell us though a little bit about Dublin and how Dublin got its name. Well, Dublin got its name. Um, the One of the early settlers, Jonathan Sawyer, he was uh, the first postmaster um, for the Dublin area. And his wife, uh, her heritage was uh, from Ireland. Her family was from Ireland and she actually died in childbirth. So to honor her and her family, he uh, named the first post office Dublin after her heritage. Hmm. Um, and the settlers, it started to catch on. And so the settlers agreed that they liked the name and so it stuck. So is there a big uh, group of Irish people live in Dublin? There's not, but of course, Dublin, we all are a little Irish most oh, of the year. Oh yeah, year. right. <laughs> Especially rush hour, is that one? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> So the St. Patrick's Day Festival, that makes sense, Dublin, right? Definitely. How many other Dublins that you know of are there in the United States? There's several other in the United States, but our Dublin is the best, of yeah. course, of okay. course. Tell us a little bit about the festival. Well, the and how, it, how it started, I guess. Sure, uh, the festival, you know, obviously being uh, called Dublin, we, you know, radio DJ back in the 1960s. Um, he liked to celebrate, so he would tell Irish jokes, play some <laughs> Irish music um, during St. Patrick's, and so it kind of stuck. And after that, people really, people really got into it. And so after that, the festival was born around 1966, wow, and it lasted for 11 days. Okay. Wow. So it just stuck after that. Why not? Why not celebrate? And then every year we just we and have the festival again. Yeah. And wow. actually the first festival, um, two of the events, um, the St. Patrick's Festival Parade and the Pancake Supper still happen to this day. And those were two of the first events. That's neat. That's neat. Now, I, I, I understand that there are shamrocks all around there. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. If you come uh, visit downtown Dublin any time of the year, you'll see in the middle of the streets green shamrocks. Um, so it was a tradition for um, after some of the events during the St. Patrick's Festival, everyone would be all dressed up and the committee would go out in the night and they would paint shamrocks in the streets during the festival. And so that kind of has lasted till uh, this day. So, so they're refreshed every year. So if you don't wear your green over there during the holiday season, will they pinch you really? Was, you don't want to find out. <laughs> don't come without don't green. Don't green. She can prepare <laughs> today. We're I'm green, prepared. So. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> now, we talked about this a little bit before. Do y'all paint the water green? We don't. We don't. There is green beer that flows. Okay. Green beer. <laughs> green beer. Uh, green <laughs> river. No, green river. But you have a river. We do have a river, yes. The Oconee River runs right uh, right through our county. Yeah. So, you know, for a lot of us, we think of St. Patrick's Day as one day, but it's more than that in Dublin. Does it, how long does it, spec does it last like a month or something almost? Pretty much. Pretty tell much us, a month. Yeah. <laughs> tell us the dates and we, uh, we things start, happen. Yeah. We start celebrating the middle of um, February. Um, you'll see, besides the shamrocks that are always in the streets, you'll see green bows of all different sizes start popping up all over the town. So the middle of February, the events pretty much start and run all the way through um, to almost the end of March. Um, we have about 40 events that take place on the weekends during the week. Um, 
Super Saturday is probably the big shebang. Um, that's always the Saturday closest to St. Patrick's Day. So if it falls in the middle of the week, we always celebrate on the weekend. So is that your favorite? day of the event? There's so many. Um, the pancake supper happens um, in the middle or early, early in March. Green? The pancakes are not green, but They're you green grits. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you can eat. Right. Um, but the whole community gets together and at one of the, um, one of the middle schools, mm -hmm. there will be people for hours and hours just hanging out, socializing, eating pancakes, just enjoying on a Thursday. Right. And that's a huge draw. The um, hot air balloon glow is another weekend event that mm -hmm. is really amazing. Um, you can take tethered rides, so you can uh, go up and look out over the crowd. Mm -hmm. And that happens over two days early in the early of the mm -hmm. month. So there's throughout the month, there's you can't just pick one, just one weekend. You have to just keep coming back. After you come back to that one. I That's love right. it. I yeah. love it. Now I saw in my notes that there's something about free barbecue. Is that right? Yes. We love barbecue. Okay. All right. All right. Well then you have to come check us out okay. for a pig in the park. Um, that is the first weekend of March. Okay. Um, so what happens is uh, people come out, they'll camp overnight at Market on Madison, which is mm -hmm. in our downtown area. There'll be people out there competing. Um, and they'll cook barbecue all night. There's live music. Um, there's rides for the kids and people just out cooking their barbecue, getting ready for right. the competition the next day. So you can just walk around to all the stands and, and they're just talk to them. Out. Yeah, talk to them about their barbecue and get samples. And it's pretty amazing. I like this. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. 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 And then you have to come back the next day for more entertainment and to see who wins. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now. There are a number of high schools in Lawrence County. It's That's a right. big county, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. But there's one Dublin high school, and are they the Irish? Yes. They That's are. right. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they also get to be Irish all year. Round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned the Super Saturday. So tell us more about that because that's if you're going to come one day, that's probably or that weekend. That's the weekend to come. Tell us, uh, the, our uh, folks, viewers, more about that day. So Super Saturday, yes, that is the that's the culmination of of the festival. Um, so we start out with the Leprechaun Road Race, um, which is huge, um, and then throughout the day the events just spill out. So we have. So you're going to do the race this year yourself? I'm hoping to. Okay, <laughs> so I'm hoping to. A 10k. There's a, yeah, you could do a one mile. It's pretty much whatever your space right. is. One mile, five k, okay. ten k. Do you, do you ever run, Dr. Harper? I have before. I I just run when chased. That's right. my that's my that's my theory. You know, if I, mean, I were coming, I'd probably walk. Yeah, you know, I've done that. Before. I've done that walk before. Or I've done that before. That. So you're you're already ahead of us. Right. That's you're right. Not. That's right. I already have my my fancy uh, St. Patrick's socks. Okay. So I feel like I'm I'm getting. So if you do it. the rest, you get a like a, a, a t shirt, shirt, a t shirt. Yeah, you get a t shirt. Yeah. yeah. The registration is um, live now. We can talk about how to do that. Okay. So, yeah, so if y'all come, I can find someone to chase you guys. You get <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Talk, uh, give us a little bit of information on the economic impact. Clearly, events like this for a, a, a smaller town like Dublin have a, a, a really disproportionate impact on the city itself. It's very healthy for the community. It's just a great thing for the area. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Certainly. Um, yes, it, it is It is amazing. Um the impact is that it spills over the rest of the year. I mean, it's, a, it's mm. several weeks. It's several weeks when we see the people um, all together, the you know twelve thousand people. Um, but it really affects the businesses, the small business owners, all year. That's that's what they. Um, it's kind of what they base their numbers on. Um, this is going to be the first uh, St. Patrick's Festival since the pandemic, um, mm. so we definitely have high hopes that we can just charge back in and be better than ever. Um, yeah, we just declared fifty thousand, right? That's right, fifty thousand. That's 000. our goal. That's We're going the goal. Fifty thousand. Yes. yes, we helped you establish a goal, fifty thousand. So you guys got to get out there, That's okay? Right. That's right. Meet that goal. <laughs> right. I'm gonna have my my little clicker in my counter. <laughs> So if you're if you're not into running, like Dr. Harper and I have established oh, yes. that we're that we're definitely not into running. Are there are there other outdoor events that people can do in Dublin? There are um, for sure. I don't know if you guys have heard of pickleball. It's okay. um, pretty much picking yeah. up popularity a lot the last several it's years. It's exploded in the it past really few has. years. It really has. Um, so we have uh, the very first Shamrock Smash pickleball tournament happening as a St. Patrick's event. Really? Um, so yeah. So Is that's that going to be this, like they're going to block off the street and have the pickleball no, out there? <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, this is a designated pickleball court um, okay. that they're going to have that at. But I don't know. Maybe we consider that for a future. Have you tried it? I've not tried it yeah, yet. Me either. I've not tried it yet. Well, we need to. We, we need to get in the event. We should do this. Yeah, <laughs> we should do this. Yeah, yeah. We can have our own team. Right. <laughs> but no, it, it looks like a lot of fun. It's a great outdoor activity. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited to have that as um, one of the official events. And we have um, several golf tournaments. I don't know if golf is anyone's speed, but there's a couple golf tournaments. So that where are the golf year. tournaments? Uh, local clubs? or It's um, at uh, Riverview Golf Course is um, the city-owned uh, golf course. Mm -hmm. And so that's where um, one of the events takes place. Uh, one of the golf courses. And then the Country, the local country club is where right. the other one takes place. Good. I guess there are prizes. There are prizes. And, well, and, right. and free lunch right. and all kinds of things. Good. <laughs> oh, you, you have some other things you want to tell us about Super Saturday, sure. right? Uh, well, besides the Leprechaun Road Race, we have um, our parade, our St. Patrick's Parade, which is always huge. Um, we're definitely looking forward. You know, all the floats have to be decorated uh, for St. Patrick's in some form or fashion. It's always fun to see what people come up with. Um, but yeah, it just it becomes a, it's an all day event. We have um, corned beef and cabbage dinner that's taking place at the same time, a, a quilt show, um, a dessert sale, all kinds of things happening throughout the day. So you, you will get your steps in on Super Saturday. Are those mostly uh, folks from uh, Lawrence County that are there that are uh, there are things that they're doing in Shelley? Mm, yes, that's right. From all yeah. over. Mostly from Lawrence County. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Arts and Crafts Festival that's also happening at the same time. So that obviously is people from mm -hmm. um, not just Georgia, but Florida, South right. Carolina coming to sell their wares and things like that. So we have to support them too. Now you, you were talking about the that uh, impact from COVID for last year and the year before. Just just how severe was that? Was it fairly restricted in, in, in years past with COVID for this event? Yes, it you know, in twenty twenty, because we do get started um, before St. Patrick's Day. Um, right. In 2020, we had already kind of started with some of the events, and so we were already getting geared up, and obviously what happened to the rest of us, everything just seemed like overnight, it just yeah. shut down. Mm -hmm. So that was very sad that we had to make those decisions, just like everyone else had to make those decisions. Yeah. But you know, we had to do what was, the decisions were made, what was best for the community, and not just the community, but for our, our, our travelers, our guests. Um, so it was, it was a little bit cloudy, um, but knowing that we could come back out of it really was the, the bright spot. Um, and this year, preparing for it was, I think everyone's been even, even more charged up um, awesome. just because we, we all missed it so much. Well, yeah. we've certainly yeah. all been praying for this to be behind us. Yes. And Every, we're hopeful yes. that this uh, recent uh, wave will, uh, is on the way down and that it's looking for brighter things Definitely. for everybody, right? Definitely, of course, of course. Yeah. Now, are, do y'all have any special music coming in town for the festival this year? We do. So another one of our events is uh, Munchies and featuring the Swinging Medallions. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Swinging Medallions, um, but they're going to be headlining um, that event. Uh, so it'll also have some of our local um, food. That's where the Munchies will come in. Mm -hmm. So you get to taste some of the, the local delights of Dublin while you're enjoying the live music. Is that outdoor event? It, it is an outdoor event, yes. Okay. It's at uh, Market of Madison, which is right in our downtown is area. Massa, which evening is that? Do you recall the date I don't on that. The exact date on it. It's the wow. 12th and 13th. I it's think. around the 12th and 13th. Like so <laughs> if you have it, you know, you can come back with it. Exactly. Right. Some, some people th kind of think maybe Dublin's a uh, super little South Georgia, middle Georgia town, but it's more than that. Is Y'all are growing. We definitely uh, It's are. one of the counties around that's, that's growing. Tell us a little bit about what, where that growth's coming from and uh, what some of the industries are there that people may not be aware of. Yeah, it, uh, the industry is is definitely booming. Um, we have YKK, we have Perry Ellis, um, we have the Best Buy um, warehouses. So it really is growing, um, but also it it's not a sleepy town. It mm. has that small town feel. Um, the The people, the people is what is mm. making Dublin grow. Um, it's a great place to come back, raise your family. We have a lot of people, a lot of young people coming back to, um, coming out of college to come back and, and expand their careers in Dublin. And, and that's, it's the small town feel, not necessarily the small town, but that makes it really great. I was looking at the Visit Dublin website yes. and 
you have, there are venues there for events that people mm -hmm. can come in for weddings and that kind of definitely, thing. There definitely. Bed and breakfast. Tell us a little bit about it if you want to come visit sure. uh, and some of the restaurants around there. Yeah, well, we have um, just in our downtown area a couple of amazing restaurants, uh, Dino's Italian um, uh, Company Supply, which has um, the only oyster bar between Savannah and Atlanta, um, hmm. and also Saltwater Fishery, um, which uh, boasts a rooftop bar where you can go up and feel the feel the breeze in your hair and look out over the city in the evenings. Um, but there is a bed and breakfast just a few blocks from our downtown area, the Page House. Um, so that's a great place to go and stay so that you're in walking distance of everything. If you want a little bit of a quiet um, atmosphere, we have uh, Dublin Farm where you can stay out on the farm and, uh, and have that seclusion a little bit. Okay. Now, Miriam, you were talking about some of the people that are in Dublin and that that's the real draw to Dublin itself. And, you know, I've always said it, it's, it's the exact same thing here in middle Georgia. You know, people like like Dr. Like Dr. Harper and others, they, they invested in the downtown area here early on. And I, I'm convinced that that's why we've seen such a, a boom in the past 10 years. And now there are businesses in every corner. And it seems like a, just 10 years ago, a lot of these places, they were just closed. And yeah. this place, it was just a very sleepy mm -hmm. town. And now there's so much industry and there's so much business and so it's so encouraging to hear that you know that there are good people out there that are willing to invest in towns Definitely. like Dublin to Dr. Harper's point say there's a couple here that's saying hey I want to I want to take a just a, a, a quick getaway for like a weekend trip and they want to go down to Dublin what do you think they should do uh, I think they definitely should. You know, you mentioned earlier the the um, the hunting and the and the outdoor. Um, so we have two wildlife management areas in Dublin that are right off of the interstate. Mm. We have Beaver Dam um, Wildlife Management Area and Riverbend Wildlife Management Area. I love the great outdoors, um, and I'll take and so a weekend trip. I would I would suggest taking your bicycles and going down to Riverbend. Um, and or just taking a walk down to Riverbend, seeing the outdoors, coming back, coming downtown. Uh, going and listening to some live music at, at one of the restaurants, um, having coffee in the downtown area, stroll around. We have two um, self-guided downtown tours um, that are just websites where you can um, take a tour of the downtown area. You can see historic photos on the website of what the uh, businesses used to be and see the historic really? photos. Yeah, yeah. Huh. and a little bit of history of what the building used to be. And then you can see how 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 it's operating today. And... Um, those are a couple of things that I would suggest. Yeah. So, so if you're, uh, say, you're just a, a, a couple that's been a newlywed here for not long and you want to get away, there's there's plenty to do in Dublin. For sure, definitely. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Now you've mentioned that there are some other festivals that Dublin has throughout the year. Can you tell us a little bit about some of those? Sure. We have. Um, so we have in May the Bontemps Crawfish Festival. Okay. Definitely need to come check that out. Um, one of our local restaurants goes down to Louisiana, picks up um, the ton of crawfish and brings the, brings the live crawfish and brings them back. And the main street in Dublin um, is closed down and they do the crawfish bowl right out in the street. So this is like fresh crawfish. Fresh. This isn't like Kroger, you know, no. been frozen for a this couple is, months. This they is, they drive down in the middle of the night, come back and oh the next morning, goodness. the festival starts. Do you, do you like crawfish? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to you'll have to come check it out. So maybe I'm delicious. glad to have the fresh ones. So now you you grew up in Dublin from a young age. Mm -hmm. Were you, do you remember as a girl that they, did they have the crawfish festival? They did then? not. This just started a couple of years ago. And so whose idea was that? This was um, a restaurant. Well, the downtown development authority mm -hmm. and a local restaurant owner in the downtown area, they all got together. And that's another thing that's amazing about Dublin is the teamwork. Right. Someone comes up with an idea. Someone else jumps on board, listens to the idea. Everyone gets together mm -hmm. and it's it's huge. And it was just mm -hmm. someone's idea. Like we want to bring... We want to bring a crawfish boil up. We want to experience that. Everyone got together, figured out how to make it work, right. and, and it's amazing. There's live music all day and into the evenings. People just celebrating, right. celebrating each other. It sounds like another guest that we had, Brian Nichols. Brian had this idea that he wanted downtown Macon covered with Christmas lights. And he goes and, and and he ran it by several people, and it was it was a coalition of people, Dr. Harper included, and some others, and they were able to pull off an incredible event like that. Yeah. But it's just because of what yeah. you said that someone had an idea mm -hmm. and the community invested in it, and exactly. that's so great to hear that Dublin does right. yeah. something similar. Yeah. 
I actually understand that there's a Martin Luther King Jr. Park that's in Dublin, Georgia, and that there is a tie-in from whenever he went to Dublin to actually give a speech. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, when uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was 15 years old, he came down to Dublin um, with his school teacher to participate in an oratorical contest, um, and he won the contest. And we found out, our local historian found out several years ago that that had happened. No one in Dublin knew. And really? that church is still standing. It's the gateway to the downtown Dublin area. Huh. Um, so that, that's, a huge, that's a huge story. It's a huge part of our history. Um, so now right across the street from the church um, is the Martin Luther King Jr. Monument Park. And you can go to the park and uh, on one of the walls there is actually um, printed the speech that he gave as a young boy at 15 years old at that church across the street. Um, there's an audio box there as well. You can listen to some of uh, Dublin's uh, civil rights experience stories and also uh, local school children retelling that speech that Martin Luther King Jr. gave when he was 15 years old. That's one of the neat things about small Georgia towns is there's yeah. so many cool facts like that, yeah. you know, that, that you just, you just, you don't hear When about, you find you out, know? you're like, oh, wow, like, blown incredible. away. And then you maybe know? you find someone that's like, oh yeah, yeah. I knew that. And it's like, what? It's amazing. <laughs> is that church uh, still an active church? It is still an active church. So yes. if you come visit, do you... Or, they allow you to go in, or maybe during the festival it's open. You or can what? certain times you can call. You can call ahead um, uh -huh. to give. Of course, during um, the pandemic, things kind of changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but you can call their offices, and there's um, and, and request a, a private touring. So is that supposedly the first recognized speech that the, yes. the Dr. King yeah, gave? It is. Wow. It's very amazing. Yeah, right. it's actually one of his autobiographies. He mentions he mentions that experience coming down with his teacher. Um, coming down to Dublin and seeing that in print is very amazing. That's so neat. Yeah. That's so neat. As, as one of the faces for Dublin and then the leadership <laughs> of what do you hope to see over the next year or two or a few years? What, are, what is the vision of the leadership for Dublin, for the community? And because uh, we always enter, we want, we'd love to, we love our neighbors. Want to see growth, want to know what's happening. So do you have anything you would like to share about what the vision is? I think, um, our, I think our vision and collectively as a whole, as a community, as a city, all of our leadership is just to continue growing. Um, you know, the pandemic kind of had us all in limbo for a little while. Um, but to continue growing, to continue seeing new business come, continue supporting new business and just working together, working together to move forward um, out of this and stronger than we were before, because I think we've all realized that, you know, we all need that support from each right. other to so continue. You mentioned the downtown development. If there's someone who wants to get involved in that downtown development, is there property still there to be developed? Uh, if people want to come down and see what's happening and maybe want to be involved? There definitely is. Um, there's there's still continued renovation of the buildings in the downtown area. So yeah, someone wants to come start the new business, come get in touch with us for sure. All right, so you've been in Dublin a long time. Mm -hmm. If you could just pick a business to come to Dublin, what do, you, what do you think that business would be? What kind of business do you think would do well in Dublin? Oh, we love food in Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> We have some amazing restaurants, yeah. but I mean, we always open the new ones. Yeah, and you like you love music too. So, I what do, what yeah. are the live music venues that might be there for folks, even if it's not festival time? Well, one of the one of the amazing events that we have that is actually coming back this year after um, kind of COVID put a little bit of a, a squash on it is our first Friday uh, music events. So, every first cool. Friday, and and that's an open air outdoor venue, the yeah. Market on Madison. So, um, actually, Pig in the Park, the St. Patrick's uh, barbecue event, will kick off the live music for first Fridays, and then every first Friday after that, we'll have live music again. So. We're really okay. excited about that. All right, so that's important having, to know, yeah, that's, right? Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Live yeah. free music, right? I'm all about that. Okay. <laughs> so you've shared a lot of information with us today here about this festival that we have coming up. If someone has has heard this and says, "A, I want to go to Dublin. I want to check it out," but B, this this festival sounds fantastic. Where would you point them to learn more about this? Uh, well, first, I would say to go to learn about Dublin in general, uh, mm -hmm. visit DublinGA.org. Okay. Um, you can find out about any of any of the festivals, any events last um, throughout the year. Um, but St. Patrick's specifically, DublinStPatrick's.com. Um, there's a list of all the events, all 40 of the events, um, how to register, 
cost, any of the details um, that you need. And we're also, of course, everyone loves social media. Um, Dublin St. Patrick's um, is on Instagram and also Dublin Lawrence St. Patrick's Festival on Facebook and we're constantly posting, keeping people updated with um, the events that are coming up and all the dates. Okay, so if more information is coming out, it'll be on social media. That's right. sure yes. people can check yes. it out. Fantastic, yeah. good deal. So if I'll go there, like the page, then I can get reminders. That's right, yes. Good, mm -hmm. all right, Miriam, thanks so much for joining us. We've really enjoyed the conversation. Dr. Harper and I have both learned a ton about Dublin and we're really looking forward to this festival. So thank you again. Thank you. And thank you guys for joining us as well and for welcoming us into your homes. And thanks for Vane Specialists of the South for making this an opportunity for us to be able to do together and to share with you. Stay tuned for where me and Dr. Harper may show up next. You never know where that might be. So Dr. Harper and I just wrapped up a fantastic conversation with Miriam from Visit Dublin, and she told us all about the this St. Patrick's Day Festival that they have coming up and a lot of the other uh, opportunities that you have to check out Dublin and some of the other events that they have there. It was a great conversation. But you know, Dr. Harper, we've been doing this for almost a year and a half now. We're on WMGT. Uh, we're getting tons of views on Facebook. A lot of people are seeing this, and it's been a lot of fun to bring some good news to the community. Talk to me about some of the conversations that have stood out to you. You know, our purpose in doing this was to promote the good things happening in our community. And it's working because people are coming up and they're saying, I enjoyed the show. I'm looking forward. What are you doing next? And uh, in a world that's all about neg negative things, uh, we think it's important to not, not gloss those over, but that we talk about the good things that are happening. And then looks like we're, we're being pretty successful with that. And we thank the folks who are encouraging us and, and the folks who are watching. I work in inventory management, requiring a lot of walking and standing on concrete. After many years, my legs were bulging and swollen and embarrassing, and I hated to wear shorts or even a bathing suit. Plus, I'm a mom. I'm very active and love shopping and outdoor activities. My legs got worse over the years, and I was having trouble sleeping because my legs ached and they were restless. Hearing great things about vein specialists of the South, I called and made an appointment. Plus, it was covered on my insurance. An ultrasound showed my legs were even worse than I thought. The staff were very caring and professional, and I loved the way the doctor talked to me during my procedure, explaining everything. This made me feel completely comfortable the entire time. And the best part, there was little downtime and I could feel a difference in my legs immediately. If you're having vein issues and ready to improve the quality of your life, I highly recommend calling Vein Specialists of the South today.